Hello, friends. Welcome back. Welcome back. My name is Casey Carbone, and it is good to be able to join you in another one of these Advent Reflections, uh, where we are each week looking at the various and upcoming scripture passages from the lectionary, and we are spending some time focusing on that theme of Advent. We've already looked at hope, peace, and this week the reflection for us is one titled Restoring Joy. The way that these usually work, once again, in case you are joining or watching or listening for the first time, is we take a look at the scripture passage, we have some time for reflection, for meditation, and then at the end there's some questions for us to reflect on as well. One of my favorite things, though, is at the beginning of each piece, if you are reading online, there's a link to a piece of music that perhaps is new to you. And this week's piece of music is by an artist named Richard Cooligan titled The Body of God. And it's just a, a lovely piece in the sense that I think it helps frame anew for us what that night of Christ's birth looked like and what that means in terms of us being the body of God. So I encourage you to check that out. And if you go to the website, you'll find that there is a link to the piece of music as well if you would like to uh, purchase it and use it in your own congregation. What we're going to start off, though, first with is a reading from Scripture. And the reading from Scripture is from Paul's, one of Paul's letters. Uh, so we are going to be focusing on a reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. So I encourage you to take a Bible of your own if you have one nearby and feel free to crack it open and turn to it. Pause this video or recording if you need time finding it. Or uh, to simply follow along on the screen or to listen to what the Word of God is laying on your hearts this day. So once again, the reading for us is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Let us listen to God's holy word. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Friends, this is the reading of God's holy word for us this day. Thanks be to God. If you don't mind, I want to tell you a story. Just picture yourself for a moment in northern New York, in the North Country. And when I say North, I don't mean where we are now. I mean, picture yourself so far up in New York where you're only about 30 minutes from Canada. Imagine for a moment the biting winds of the cold as it brushes against your face. Picture the gray clouds that are hanging in the sky. Picture mounds of snow that are so deep, they would go up to your waist if you tried to jump in them. This is the kind of day I found myself driving in as I was making my way back from a church service. I probably should not have been driving, but it was one of those days where it could have gone either or, and I had new set of snow tires on, so I was feeling pretty good. And regardless of all these warning signs from the weather, I pressed on navigating those winding roads through the countryside. It got to a point, though, where I approached a turn that was no sharper than, than any other turn I encountered up there. But I remember driving along, and as I was turning the wheel, there was a little bit of a delayed reaction to the scary thought or realization that the car was not heading in the same direction I was turning the wheel. 
And so I panicked. And even in that sense of panic and fear, did what you're supposed to do in terms of turning the wheel the other way. But nothing worked. And I was tossed into this field covered in powdery snow. And that moment where I came to a stop, there was a sense of pause of getting over what just happened, that fear and panic, that rush of adrenaline. Also, though, a a feeling of thankfulness that I was okay. But once that all sort of settled in, I realized I had to try and do something. So I tried backing out. I tried turning the wheel and getting my car back up in a way where I would be able to get back on the road, but nothing worked. And I soon realized that everything at this point was not working. And it just resulted in the wheels futilely spinning around and around, digging deeper into the snow. So finally, I did the thing I least wanted to do because I didn't know what was going to happen next, how much it was going to cost. But I reached into my pocket and pulled out my phone and dialed for a tow truck. And the wait felt indeterminable as I sat there in the car with the cold just seeping in little bit by little bit through the cracks. But let me tell you, as I sat in that car thinking about everything that just happened, nothing felt better in that moment when I looked into the rear view mirror and saw those ugly but very beautiful at the moment whirling amber lights that signaled that help had arrived. It's humbling. It's very humbling to realize that there are things and moments in life where we can't do it all by ourselves. That we don't possess the ability to do everything we want to do by ourselves. Which is why I think that as we hear this scripture reading and as we focus on the theme of joy, that's why I think it's important for us to remember. That's why it's important for us to remember that amid everything that's going on in the world and in our lives, and in those moments where it feels like we're driving this out of control car, there is something there's a need for something for us to hold on to, to root ourselves, to have a firm foundation to rely on, such as joy, the life-giving joy that restores our tired, our fearful, and our uncertain souls. As we reflect on these various themes during the course of Advent, you probably realize this already, but we can't do any of these things, whether it's living into apocalyptic hope or living into a sense of true and meaningful peace or restoring joy. We can't do any of these things by ourselves because we can't as much as we might want to go through life alone. We're going to need a source of joy that can sustain us when the going gets tough so that we don't succumb to the trials of life. And it's not that trials are bad. It's not that hurdles are bad. Because I think in those crucible moments, we're shaped and we're formed and refined. It's not that they're bad or things that we should avoid. But it would be foolish to think we could do it all by ourselves. I think that's why as we look around and as we assess what church looks like, what faith communities look like, what our spiritual lives look like, as we look around and assess these things, I think that's important important for us to remember that the reason we do so to gather together is to find collectively, to discover collectively, to cling to collectively the joy of God's hope, peace, and love, knowing that when we root ourselves in this faith, we are given the sustenance we need 
to go on, to find together collectively joy that restores our souls. Though I want to say this, I understand that as we talk about what restoring joy looks like, knowing that we can't do it alone, I want you to know that you are not alone if you struggle this Advent season to even think about what restoring joy or finding joy looks like. Because there is this weightiness to the world right now, and perhaps for some of you, that weightiness has been around even longer. That makes it challenging to find the joy in Advent or the holiday season. But I would encourage you to still look around, to look around you and find something that you can hold on to. Something that you can cling to in the way that Paul encourages the church to cling to faith. To cling to all that is good. To cling to everything that is a part of the life way of God. As a way to support you and bring about even an ounce of joy that restores your soul. Perhaps that's what what I want to hit home for sure. It's because we've talked about some pretty weighty things in these devotionals. But this idea of restoring joy when we feel like we're stuck, when we can't get out of a situation, it's what it's important for us then to realize that there are things we need to embrace, to incorporate into our lives as a way to sustain our faith, to bring about and to bring back joy into our faith. We might be unable to fix all the world's problems, or even the problems that are happening in our lives this Advent season. But still, I believe that we can work towards altering the way we approach trials and struggles so that in our growing faith, we might see that joy comes in the morning, as the psalmist once said. That joy, or the restoration of joy, is a process that is best done in community and relationship rather than alone. Just look at this Christ child who we are waiting to come into the world, this Christ child who would come to gather people from all walks of life to live for shared joy that comes from the heart of God. Friends, as we consider the ways in which we might restore joy in our lives this Advent season, I have some questions uh, for you to consider. I want you to think about a moment in your life where you felt overwhelmed or perhaps helpless, like being stranded in a snow-covered field. How did you respond to that situation? How might recognizing our limitations and seeking external help align with the search for joy and resilience in challenging times? What are some practices or beliefs in your life that serve as anchors during difficult moments, offering solace and restoring your spirit? How can these sources of joy be shared or extended to others in need? And lastly this, in what ways can faith communities or support networks or even yourself play a role in fostering resilience, hope, and joy during challenging seasons? How can we encourage one another to seek and sustain joy amidst life's uncertainties? Friends, as we reflect on that i look forward to joining you in our last devotion next week until then be well